Modern sealants promise protection, but you know they often fail within a decade. Decks crack, beams warp, and fences rot from the inside out, despite expensive chemical treatments. Yet Viking ships crossed stormy seas, and timber-framed halls stood for centuries. How did they do it? The answer isn't a secret formula. It's a method, a way of thinking about wood that modern construction abandoned. Vikings didn't try to trap water. They taught wood to resist it, to survive repeated wetting and drying, and to repel rot from the inside out. Understanding this method can change how you build, repair, or maintain any wooden structure today. The Viking method started by accepting water instead of fighting it. Modern construction views moisture as the enemy. Paints, membranes, and synthetic coatings attempt to lock wood in a permanently dry state. You know, Vikings understood that water would always reach wood. Their strategy really was to allow wood to get wet, but to ensure it could dry efficiently and safely. Rot fungi thrive when wood remains wet, so the goal was never to seal water out completely, but to prevent prolonged exposure. By designing wood to shed water, breathe and maintain structural integrity, Vikings created timber that improved with time instead of degrading. Tree selection and cutting time removed decay before it began. Vikings carefully selected slow-grown trees, producing dense heartwood that naturally resisted decay. Sapwood, which is full of sugars and starches, was avoided because it feeds fungi. Timber was felled during winter dormancy when sappy was at its lowest further reducing nutrient availability for rot organisms. This principle is simple to apply today. Choose heartwood-dense lumber, avoid fast-grown sapwood for critical structures, and harvest during the cold season whenever possible. Water-soaking prepared timber like a chemical treatment without chemicals. After felling, Vikings often submerged logs in rivers, ponds, or tidal waters for months or even years. This was not mere storage. Water leached sugars and starches that fungi feed on while leaving the structural fibers intact. Cold water, you see, slowed microbial activity and flushed decay fuel away. The result was timber fundamentally resistant to rot before it was ever shaped or treated. Modern builders can actually replicate this by soaking posts or beams before drying them slowly, especially, you know, for ground contact use. Slow drying strengthened wood instead of stressing it. Following soaking, Timber was dried slowly under cover with airflow, sometimes for years. Slow drying allowed the internal fibres to compress evenly, increasing density and toughness while minimising cracks. Modern kiln drying, by contrast, extracts moisture rapidly, leaving wood stressed, brittle and, well, vulnerable to moisture cycling. Air-dried timber, properly stacked and protected from direct rain, retains strength and resists rot far better than chemically treated but quickly dried lumber. Controlled heat or charring altered the wood's chemistry. Vikings often exposed wood surfaces to controlled heat or light charring. This killed surface fungi, hardened fibres, and sealed pores, 
making the wood less absorbent and more rot-resistant. Unlike modern sealants, which coat the surface and can crack, heat transforms the wood itself into a durable material. A practical modern adaptation is, you know, lightly torching exterior wood, brushing off loose carbon and following with oil or tar. This step dramatically increases resistance to moisture and insects. The most famous Viking treatment, pine tar, was not a paint or surface sealant. It was heated and applied to warm wood so it could penetrate deep into fibres, not just sit on the surface. Tar repelled water, discouraged insects and, well, remained flexible in cold temperatures. Most importantly, it did not trap moisture inside the wood. Warm pine tar applied repeatedly over time gradually transformed wood into a composite-like material with natural resistance far exceeding most modern sealants. For home application, warm the tar, apply it to warm or sun-heated wood, allow absorption and repeat periodically. Joint design made water work for the structure. Vikings designed planks and beams to tighten when wet, not to crack or leak. Overlaps, beveled edges and compression joints meant that swelling improved seals rather than damaging the structure. Clinker-built ships exemplify this principle. As planks absorbed water, they expanded to create a watertight hull. Even today, designing overlaps, slopes and proper drainage paths prevents rot far better than relying solely on coatings. Maintenance, you know, kept timber alive for centuries. The Viking method was never just set it and forget it. Ships were retarred, roofs repaired, and any small damage was, well, addressed early on. Regular inspection and retreatment honestly ensured longevity. Modern reliance on so-called permanent sealants? Well, it ignores this principle and unfortunately fails when those protective layers inevitably crack or degrade. The Viking method, you see, provides durability without industrial dependence. It works with local timber, just basic tools, and honestly a bit of patience, rather than those expensive synthetic chemicals. For survivalists, homesteaders, or historical builders, it offers a proven system to extend the life of wood, really, almost indefinitely. If this exploration revealed the secrets behind why Viking timber outlasts modern sealants, please consider supporting In the Beginning by subscribing, sharing this with fellow history enthusiasts, and helping to preserve centuries of practical historical knowledge for generations to come.